Carol Klein. I'm the Dean of Workforce Development here at Confederation College, and we have um, organized the afternoon of conferences uh, for this seminar, and we're pretty, we're excited about it. Um, the, the theme that we've used to kind of organize the people you're going to hear from is sort of our role um, here at the college contract training division and how we build partnerships with industry and some of the great exciting work we've had the privilege of doing with uh, many communities and industry partners over the last, I guess it is 35 years for this department, not 35 years for Nick and I, because that would mean we would have been two or something like that when we started doing the work. Um, but definitely for this department and branch of the college, they've been working in contract training and partnership with industry and community for the past 35 years. So our, our division works very closely with the strategic plan and we look at the pillars always in our work. And there's four main ones that you know jump out for us that really work well with the work we do. Um, access and success is the big one, the main one. Um, our division really looks at mobilizing um, the work we do, something happened to the slide there, Nick, uh, the work we do um, with communities to ensure that if people are unable to get to the college, which is a pretty significant population in this region, rural and remote Indigenous communities, that we really design and provide training right within community. Now, Nick's trying to test my memory of actually knowing the strategic Give directions for the second. college. <laughs> and, uh, but the next one is actually... Um, uh, looking at um, ensuring that we have access and success for uh, Indigenous folks in the region, which fits also with the access and success pillar. Um, the other one is community prosperity. And so a couple of the projects that Nick will probably highlight and talk about uh, today will really highlight that kind of um, how our college really connects with and uh, supports communities in their need to uh, to look at um, growing and uh, and increasing their ability to be prosperous. And the final one is uh, Institute of Excellence. And so that's probably more what you'll hear from Colin, our, our post-secondary dean later on this afternoon, but really looking at, again, when we're looking at responding to industry and communities around the area, we really are then pushed to be sort of the center of excellence or the institution of excellence in this area being, you know, the, the uh, I would say one of the bigger inst colleges in Northwestern Ontario, uh, mainstream colleges in Northwestern Ontario. There's lots of partnership colleges and um, other colleges that are coming up, but definitely from our perspective, um, being prominent in the community and supporting the outlying partners is really important. Um, so I think that was it for introducing where we're at. And, um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Nick being mindful of time, we want to just make sure that we don't keep you too long so that we can move over to to our other presentations as well. So I think we're gonna have time at the end for for questions. So Thanks, Carol. And um, sorry, everybody, my apologies. I uh, that was a little bit of left field there. Um, so yeah, my name is Nick Iketa. I am a program manager with the college here in, in our workforce development department. And I've been running programs for the past five years here. And uh, we just wanted to start to, to um, share what we're doing, um, you know, not just in the mining sector, but overall within workforce development. So we'll, we'll take you through some slides here and we'll, ha we'll have some time for questions after, but uh, I wanted to start with this slide here because it really does encompass uh, our strategic approach within workforce development. Uh, so if you look, uh, uh, center is what we do is, is we create jobs and, that, and that's what we try to keep a focus on within our department is, is what, uh, what, what are we doing? How are we creating jobs and building an economy here? But within that, we have to be considerate of, uh, of four different areas. Number one is employer needs. And whether that employer is uh, industry, if that's government, if that's uh, First Nation, we start there and ask questions. What is it that you need? What is it that you want? Uh, and then from there, we move to uh, our selection and assessment. And I know um, in a warm and fluffy world, uh, everybody can do anything that they want to do. Uh, and we, uh, we want to respect everyone's uh, right to, for that path. 
but if you can see me on screen here, I'm a five foot nine stubby Italian guy. I, I'm not going to make the NBA. Uh, and I think it would be unethical for a coach or somebody to tell me that, Nick, yeah, you can make the NBA. So we want to be realistic uh, in, in our selection assessment process, meaning that although uh, for, for the certain jobs that we might be training for, um, there are skills that you're going to have to need or prerequisites that you're going to have to need. So there is a selection assessment piece that we do want to consider. Uh, and if you're not there yet, uh, that's okay too, because if I train my butt off for the next 15 years, I might make the NBA uh, and I got a better chance at it, but I have to put 15 years of training in. So these are the conversations and, and, the, and the tough conversations that sometimes we have to have with employers, with government, with uh, participants in our program. Uh, the, the next stage of that is a preparation piece. And I think this is one of the reasons that we stand out uh, within our department, because this is really catered preparation towards, uh, you know, our end goal of skills training and jobs. Uh, right now, as an example, we have everything from prep courses being core educational, life skill courses, uh, introduction to computer courses, to customize and specialize pre-training math for level one uh, carpentry, as an example. Uh, so, so we really try to prepare people for more uh, holistic type learning and making sure that we're platforming or tiering individuals towards skills, tra skills training, which is our, our last step there. And, and that's when we get into um, curriculum and customized skills training. So from, from this starts to come more residual areas uh, of our approach, which are, you know, cultural awareness, uh, and that's exposing ourselves and, and the people that we're working with through cultural awareness. Academic excellence from the college's point of view and the standards that we hold, uh, pride and respect, and, and building strong alliances and strategic alliances. So with that, um, there are contractual obligations, I'll say that, that we always want to meet, that we'll always strive to meet. Um, but there's always a sense of wise practices behind that and, and ethically how we're doing what we're doing. Uh, and, and the first and foremost is always full transparency. So we want to sit at a table. Uh, we're not hiding anything. And, uh, you know, uh, there's no ulterior agenda to what we're doing. Uh, and, and this is how we start to build relationships, in particular with uh, our Indigenous partners. The other piece of that is the importance of action over words. Um, and I, well, yeah, for, for anybody in industry, they would, they would realize that you're only as good as your last program or your last job or your last whatever it might be. So um, we have to do a good job in and out consistently all the time. Um, and, and we pride ourselves on that too. So we keep that in the back of our mind of uh, what was a standard last time and how do we do better? Uh, the other piece to that is, again, in working with Indigenous communities, which, um, which the majority of our training is now uh, with partner communities, um, considering socioeconomic development uh, and what that looks like. So this is um, longer term, bigger term thinking about how is what we're doing going to impact uh, X, Y, and Z in the future. Um, we have to believe that healthy, sustainable, self-prospering self communities they're achievable, they're, and, and, and we want to partner with them to get there. And in a perfect world, you know, in five to seven years, uh, you know, we're not needed anymore, uh, you know, is, is one of the things that we'd like to go in thinking. Um, and then with that, though, that's when you could really start to co-design, co-create, and really build partnerships of, uh, around uh, socioeconomic development. And that brings us to our training strategy then. So, uh, First and foremost, we start with community outreach uh, in our um, in all of our programs, recruitment, and then the comprehensive intake and assessment. Now, one of the I would say key factors for any successful program that we've run off campus in a remote Indigenous community uh, is that we are in that remote Indigenous community and we have uh, presence there. Not only that is is we always look to build in. Um, uh, someone local to, to either work as a program officer, project officer. Um, and, and these are the people that know the community the best, that know the individuals best. So we always wanna make sure that we're incorporating what we're doing with um, the community and, and members of the community. 
So uh, we have a student-centered model, individualized planning, wraparound support services. This is all done uh, at, the, uh, at the forefront of any plan, any training plan that we're developing. Um, what, what, are, what can we foresee as being concerns or issues with this individual student? Um, and uh, without getting into too much detail, uh, there are, yeah, we'll go to an extreme to make sure that wraparound support services are available uh, for, for individuals that are in our programs. Uh, that, and that, that's interagency, that's working with uh, you know, community members. Um, and once we have a plan in place to make sure that we have a plan towards success, then we can start really with, with the, the training. Uh, and that starts with the prep, the training prep. So as an example, uh, energy readiness, foundation skills, life skills, core educational skills, uh, a multitude of different programs uh, uh, prep that we can do. Tier two type programs is when we get to kind of semi-skilled occupations. Um, and you can see from the list uh, on the screen. So these are ones that we start to uh, develop, but they have a possibility to grow into something else. And then we do our skilled pre-trades, which, um, and, you know, uh, we are a TDA, so um, any of the ones that, that we are uh, able to, to do. And then employment prep. So one of the things we want to make sure is, is how are we offboarding, um, not just onboarding, but how are we offboarding out of trading and onboarding into employment? What does that look like? What does retention look like? What do support systems look like uh, for our students? So I just wanted to highlight, so as an example, in our department uh, from now, currently till March 31st, um, these are the active programs we'll be running within our department. So uh, if you have a look, they're uh, a little bit of everything. Um, we're, we're, a, we're a mixed bag here, melting pots, jack of all trades, however you wanna put it. But uh, the, the, if this is what's asked for or needed in, in communities, then this is, uh, is what we're, we're able to do. Um, and recent community partners. So we wanted to share this too. So, so you guys got a sense of the scope of what the College Workforce Development Department is doing. Um, so, so at any given time, one, three, five, 10, 50 of these communities we could be working with. Um, but these are just some of the recent ones that, that we have uh, um, been fortunate enough uh, to partner with and work with in the past few years. And then I wanted to just highlight, because I love this. This is, this is what makes it real, right? Is when you get to see the pictures, when you get to see the people. Um, so we always try and you know, take some pictures to highlight what we're doing. But uh, you know, right now, we are just working through, as an example, introduction to carpentry uh, and level one carpentry and heavy equipment and mechanical harvesting all in Mishkegogamang First Nation. Um, so these are some of the pictures here. Um, so. That's uh, we're, we're we're excited to share this, uh, and then yeah. So so not only do we do the trades type, there's also uh, introductory computers as an example. Academic upgrading we offer introductory accounting, office admin. So those jobs that will take um, someone maybe to uh, you know tier one type jobs, uh, we're able to offer training for that. And then uh, what we start to do is to build in what it looks like after that as well. So what drives workforce development? This is, I wanted to end on this one because it ties back in, and sorry, Carol, because I cut these off earlier to the strategic pillars of the college. Um, but if we're doing our job, this is what we're providing and how we're, we're providing access and success. We're contributing towards indigenous education uh, and, and which is driving community prosperity for those communities. And at the end of the day, if we're doing our job, those will all filter down to institutional excellence for us. So this is where this is where I wanted to end, um, and I, I don't know what we're doing for time, but uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity uh, for questions Hi. and things like that. You're driving, sorry. Oh, okay, sorry. Hmm. Okay. I think so you're. So the only reason I wanted to ask the question. So I think. So I have asked Bill to have a chat with me. He was busy last night, like I said. I think, I think you I have your you mic gone. Night, Hello. So today. Hello. All I did was ask him to please Hello. text me first. In Just case. mute. Mute. You can mute her. There we go. Oh. All right. Phew. 
Dodge Not sure that. where that came from. <laughs> we dodged that bullet. Somebody yeah. was going to get in trouble, I think. Technology. Um, <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think what we wanted to do is 1248. So I think if we wanted to take a couple of questions, if there was any questions for uh, Nick or myself, we could do that now. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and while we're waiting, Carol, to see if there's any questions, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always... Um, I, whenever I, I, I see a conference like this and I see everything that is offered uh, at, at, the, at the college and, uh, and, and university level to get people into the workforce and properly um, enlighten them about the opportunities that are out there, I'm always amazed that uh, there's just so much. There's an abundance of information and all you have to do is take advantage of it. It's more of a yeah. comment than a question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and and I think the, the the second piece to that is not only is there abundance uh, within the college itself, but just the ability to create customized programs as well, right? Uh, which is really what we've carved a niche for is that we we, we recognize that uh, industry, corporations, government, First Nations, these are pretty particular needs, uh, and especially when you're dealing with different populations. So um, taking the time in the forefront to create these programs uh, where everyone has, uh, you, you know, a say and a share in this vision that you have for the programs. So that's, uh, th those are the ones that we really get excited about. Awesome. Yeah. And go ahead, Carol. Yeah, I was just going to add to that. I think one of the things that we've learned as a college, though, is that um, sometimes there is that overarching sort of theory that all you have to do is take advantage of it. And I recognize, Kevin, you're, you're, you're highlighting like the, the vast opportunities, and I appreciate that, and thank you for that. But I think one of the things we have to understand about Northwestern Ontario is that everybody doesn't start with an equal um, advantage from like grade school, high school up. So it's easier for me as somebody that's born and raised in Thunder Bay to, to reach out and take advantage of anything that comes my way because I've actually had everything at my fingertips, my doorstep. I have had access to it. Um, when we think about Northwestern Ontario and the role that our college plays, we really have to recognize that many of our communities, many of the people we're trying to recruit to come to the college don't have high schools. In their in their actual community, so yeah. it's a it's a different way of thinking about taking advantage of things. Um, and we've learned from the college perspective um, that we can't just train for the sake of training. So years ago, prior to when Nick and I were involved in this department, and it was in, with good intention, there were there were ideas around well. There's funding for um, PSW, let's just say. There's funding for PSW. So we'll run out and we'll, we'll train everybody in PSW. But if you're going to train me in my community to be a personal support worker, but there's no healthcare um, facilities in my community, I'm not going to get a job as a personal support worker. But, you know, we gave you training and we gave you training allowances and we brought the opportunity there. Um, but there's not really anything to do with that. So we've really moved from training for the sake of training um, to training for purpose and employment and really building that with community. So we don't offer, we don't go into community to train. Tr community comes and asks us about training for whatever is accessible in their community. Mm -hmm. And again, just really recognizing that we have to really customize some of these programs because not everybody starts from the same point of education. Yeah. We've got about three or four minutes we can continue that conversation. Uh, there's, a, there's more of a comment than a question right now from Tim Sadler, who is saying, you know, we recommend the pre-Millwright and welder programs with an exclamation mark. So I'm assuming Tim is, and it's got Millwright local. And so I'm assuming that uh, Tim has his fingerprints there somewhere. But uh, Tim, great observation. One of the things uh, uh, I'll, I'll share, Carol and, uh, and Nick, uh, while we're chatting here and waiting for a couple more questions, because we do have a couple minutes. I did spend uh, some time, I, I spent about three years in, in human resources for an industrial services company uh, based, in, uh, based in Timmins. And, um, and, and the, the, another thing that is really important that I think young people don't get exposure to is uh, financial management as well. So quite often, um, you know, people will get a job and I'll just use $25. I'll say $25 an hour is, is their, their starting wage. And all of a sudden somebody comes along with $26 an hour, or $27 an hour. And they're, they're thinking that that extra dollar an hour might improve their life when if they just stay with the existing company that they're with 
and put in an hour of overtime, one or two hours of overtime. And that's the equivalent of getting a pay raise someplace else and having to pick up and move. It's so complex what happens in today's marketplace um, that uh, there, there's a lot of education. Like you said, the, the disadvantaged communities are, are a little bit more behind the eight ball than than most. So your point is, is very well taken. The other, the other comment I would make uh, for you, Nick, is that, uh, you know, the last time I saw a coach in the NBA over six foot tall, that was Phil Jackson from Chicago and Los Angeles. So there's room for a coach in the NBA if you want to be a coach. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a different path. But yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, and, and I was just going to add, so uh, it's funny you say this. So we also work with sort of Long Lake for the last couple of years. And, uh, and, it, and, in kind of the vision that we're thinking is, is longer term, but one of the ideas is around the opportunities that are gonna come um, with all the industry that will be coming in that area, right? So, uh, you know, we're running an introduction to entrepreneurship course, uh, introduction to business courses, uh, because now there's gonna be opportunities for individuals to think just beyond their, their community uh, and how to maximize potential for everything coming in. So. Yeah, that, uh, that's a great point, though, is uh, it's always kind of what's next, right? How do you prep for what's next? Um, uh, yeah. Terrific. Well, Carol and Nick, uh, thank you. I know that we need to, uh, I think, uh, go ahead and close this room and get ready for the next one. I believe, Carol, that you're going to be uh, co-hosting this afternoon. So thank you for stepping in to do that for this great session. Uh, our next session is going to be right at the top of the hour with uh, Marie Helen Jelena from uh, Greenstone Mine. And uh, that will be underway at the top of the hour in approximately five, maybe maybe six minutes. So Carol, Nick, thank you for kicking us off for the afternoon session. Thank you all. Thanks, see you soon. Bye.